Welcome to the introduction to the Math Review for Physical Chemistry playlist. So there are often many topics which are necessary for success in physical chemistry in math, but students often haven't reviewed them for uh, perhaps a few years since the last time they took a calculus or some other math course. So this is just a review to get us all on the same foot about what's important in terms of math for success in these courses and what really isn't necessary. So for each of the videos, or each of the topics that I've got listed here in this page, there's pretty much a corresponding video or two about the basics of those things and some more uh, ideas about where you can go for practice from there. So the main four topics which are going to be important, starting at things that you would have learned in high school, would include algebra, trigonometry, calculus, and in some cases, linear algebra. More often than not, this is an advanced topic, and most of the videos in this playlist are advanced topics that are necessary for some of the more uh, computational chemistry-like applications, but I've included linear algebra just because I have those videos here as well. Okay, so starting off with algebra, um, being able to perform algebra fluently is absolutely vital for success in PCHEM. You need to be able to do things like manipulate equations, solve for variables, solve for quadratic equations, equations with exponentials, logarithms, be able to work with complex numbers. So pretty much all of those things that I have listed here. How to add, multiply, factor, solve polynomials, uh, how to get the roots of polynomials, things like uh, setting something to zero and solving it. Uh, how to work with exponents like e to the a times e to the b versus e to the a to the b, those sorts of things. How to deal with logarithms and manipulate those. And how complex numbers work, things that involve the square root of negative one. Then trigonometry is pretty important for a lot of quantum chemistry type applications. Lots of sines and cosines that show up everywhere. So we have the trig functions, not only sine and cosine, but tangent, cotangent, arc sine, inverses, all those good things. What do the graphs of those things look like? So from 0 to 360 degrees and beyond, what do each of those types of trig functions look like? Um, the unit circle, which is things like Pythagorean theorem and how all the different trig functions are related to one another, all the various identities that connect them, and how you can use those in different coordinate systems like polar coordinates or spherical polar coordinates versus your standard Cartesian coordinates. And lastly, something that comes in handy quite a few times is Euler's formula, relating sines and cosines to complex exponentials. Then moving on to calculus, we have, of course, calculus is primarily composed of derivatives and integrals. And in each of those cases, just understanding conceptually what the definitions of those are, um, what are the basic rules for the derivative and integrals of basic functions like sine, cosine, exponential, polynomial, those sorts of things. And what are the special rules for things that are combinations like product rule, chain rule, uh, quotient rule, those sorts of things. All right. Also, how to do repeated derivatives like second derivatives, third derivatives. How to find the critical points, so maximum and minimum values of functions. Those questions come up quite a bit. Um, occasionally Taylor series, not so much being able to construct Taylor series, but just understanding where they come from and uh, where we get the various terms from. Then partial derivatives, um, the analogs of derivatives for multiple dimension functions, and understanding how to do derivatives in multiple dimensions as well. Typically the types of derivatives and integrals you're asked, you're asked to do aren't very computationally intensive, but often um, they're set up to be able to be solved in, in just a few steps if you, if you really understand how these basic rules work. Then moving on to what might be advanced topics, unless your professor is fairly uh, rigorous or mean, you might say, um, how to work with vectors, matrices, the determinants of matrices, uh, determinants come up quite a bit even in undergraduate applications. 
Um, other properties of matrices, like for example, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, Dirac notation comes up in quantum mechanics quite a bit, and you can use it in terms of matrices as well. You can use matrices as operators. Um, a lot of the same kinds of things that we teach in quantum mechanics you can do with matrices if you know how to use those and make those connections. Again, commutators, diagonalizing, and how to turn matrix matrices into functions. So a lot of those are more advanced topics for, part, for more of the advanced uh, sections of this channel. But definitely everything in these first three uh, playlists are going to be pretty vital for success in either thermodynamics, quantum mechanics, uh, statistical mechanics, spectroscopy, any of the kind of topics that you'll study as an undergraduate PCHEM student, these topics are going to be really, really important to have a solid basis on.